Good morning and uh, welcome to the American College of Protestantists annual meeting here in San Francisco. I have the great honor of spending a few minutes online with you with Dr. Lyndon Cooper, who is the chair of the American College of Prostodontists Education Foundation. Dr. Cooper, welcome. Stan, thank you very much for joining us at the ACP meeting and thank you for all your support of the Education Foundation. Thank you. I want to go off the record for one second. I think the ACP are the warmest people. It doesn't mean other parts of dentistry are not, but what a great community you've built. People really care about each other, they care about the healthcare of America, and they care about dentistry in general. So congratulations. Thank you, we really do. And you know, this metaphor of building a community is very important to us. The Education Foundation actually spends a lot of time thinking about how we create a neighborhood and populate it with the right people so that they can have easy, comfortable conversations and that we care about all of our neighbors. And you see it in our community. You see the way we approach yes. every part of dentistry. Yes. And, and thank you for noticing. Sure, it's, 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 it's fantastic. Now, in business, we have entrepreneurs. In academia and in the professional society world, we have what's called social entrepreneurs. And I have to say, the work that we worked on with the ACP in bringing to reality the curriculum for digital dentistry and dental school uh, schools is something that I would never have imagined would have happened so fast. It really is social entrepreneurship at its finest. An alignment of the needs of the dental profession with the healthcare of Americans and dentistry and welcoming in industry. Perhaps, uh, Dr. Cooper, you, you can give us a feel for how this all came about and what the goals are of the uh, curriculum aspect of the foundation. Well, you know, um, back in 2007, 2008, useful technology began to trickle into dentistry. And we all know about adoption curves, and yes, there were some of us who were really early adopters. And we began to look around at our colleagues who were sneering or peering or questioning what was going on, and we began to realize that they were just more than curious. And we asked, how could we increase this adoption curve? How could we build trust among our members? And at the end of the day, people like myself and Dr. Lily Garcia, Steve Campbell, Dr. Lefebvre, we decided that we would begin this activity in our dental schools. If we could reach the youngest dentists who are already tech savvy, it would be the easiest step forward. Right. And by 2011, 2012, the idea had gelled. And that's when we had the good fortune to meet your team. And as you recall, this was not an easy conversation. Why would industry want to be involved in right. this activity? And I think we all agreed that it was a noble idea, but it was a risky idea. And as you said so many times, how could a group of academicians or nonprofit organization people drive such an initiative? Right. We didn't have that answer, but we had the belief that it was the right thing to do for dentistry. That the advantages of digital technology are so overwhelming in their import to right. quality of care, goodness of care, and most importantly, to fair communication among dentists, technicians, and most importantly, to their patients that we had to do this. Right. So I guess I need to turn the question around and what was it that leadership at Henry Schein saw in the ACPF and Digital Dentistry Initiative? Well. I have to say that we get many ideas that are shown to us and very often it's the brainstorming with the professional association that ultimately leads to something. For example, the Give Kids a Smile, it really was born on the back of a napkin. The dental, a couple of dentists came to us and said, we should take care of the underserved uh, 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 children of this country from a dental point of view, what can we do? And we brainstormed them. Uh, we had a couple of key leaders that came together and created the program. I have to say it's the same with you. We had many, many ideas on how to 
do things, make this better, this idea is good for society, etc., etc. And I was rather skeptical. But when I met with yourself and your leadership team, I felt a huge amount of passion, a huge amount of feeling a commitment to going to the younger dentist and telling the younger dentist why digital dentistry is important. And it's just not out there, it's part of actually the dental world and it can be brought in, it can be connectivity. And you guys made us feel very, very comfortable that we were partnering with doers. But I have to say, even in the early days, I was a little nervous. I said, would they actually get it done? Because you are a voluntary group, no one's required to come to work, no one's required to participate. And at the end, we said, you know, we're going to do this alone. Because if we bring others in, and it doesn't work, it'll be egg on our face in a bad way. But pretty quickly, we saw that you guys were so committed, you were doers. And we went to our friends in the industry and brought them in. And so now you have industry-wide support working with your college, which is not the biggest college, but is now spearheading this idea of digital dentistry into the greater dental community. So congratulations. Thank you. I, I think this opportunity that you provided and, and it's only an opportunity because Henry Schein provided us with the resources. It demonstrates who the American College of Prosthodontists are and who our members are. Right, right. We really are the most impassioned clinicians. And what we've had the opportunity to do is get like-minded people together at a particular time in the history of our industry. Right. You know, when you look for volunteers, it's often difficult. The room yes. can get very silent. Yes. But in this particular situation, it, there was no problem finding a volunteer. There was no problem finding right. talented volunteers. And what you've seen are young people working with seasoned clinicians. You've right. seen inexperienced people working on teams. And it's worked out very, very well for us. I am so pleased with what you've done. You know, at the end of the day, the world is going to be shaped, always is, by young people. You're giving young people a platform to take their ideas of digitalization from the school into the practice of dentistry. Uh, young people today are very impatient. They want to take their technology and use it. Uh, it is very trying for some of us, but I will say that it's my view that the millennials will in the end be the greatest generation ever, and you're providing that bridge to use the millennial talent and bring it into dentistry. So do you think that's the key to acceleration? Is that is, is focusing on them the reason we are going to see this proliferate and we're going to see a true transformation in dental health care? Well, my two-year-old granddaughter brings me into dentistry, into the new world, because I'm constantly see, watching how she's using, at two years old, my iPhone. And I think it's the younger people that bring us in, and at the end of the day, we stay young because of younger people. So, begin at the dental school, teach the dental dentists, that, uh, the dental students, how important oral care is, and how we can adapt oral care to the digital technology, and I believe dentistry is secure for many, many years to come. Very exciting. It is. What do you think about the next steps? How are we gonna reach the others? You know, the, the laggards in this adoption curve. I believe it'll be the younger dentists who, will un who understand technology, who are going to dental school, you will bridge the gap between the knowledge of dentistry and they will bring the technology in and you'll bridge that gap. They'll go into the private sector, they'll go into government, they'll go into dental school and they'll bring all of us in. And I think at the end of the day, it takes the restless to bring the whole community in and they are restless. You provided a unique platform to, to engage younger people's know-how of technology marry it with your knowledge of dentistry and at the end of the day bring better dentistry to bear to many more people because at the, when you cut through everything digitalization of dentistry is going to make it more affordable for many more people to be covered by dentistry while maintaining uh, the profession as a good place to earn a living. And are dentists going to get their heads around the idea that we're moving from an area of commodity to capital investment? Where, where the dentist understands the value is actually in the internet of things as we talk about, or the technology and not a tube of something or a bottle of the other? I believe the younger people will get us there and they know it. 
and they are then going to bring all of us along. I know it sounds impossible, but to quote the late President Mandela, it only seems impossible until it's done. Very good, very good. Sure. This issue of reverse mentorship, yes. it's, in the, it's in the press, it's in the business yes. press. A couple yes, weeks yes. ago, three or four pages in the New York Times. Do you think dentistry is ready for reverse mentorship? Well, you've created the platform. It's going to happen. Those students that are going to go through this curriculum, and what is so remarkable about this curriculum, I don't know how you guys did it, but you got all the deans to agree. These deans don't work for the college, they work for their provosts and their universities, but somehow or another through persuasion, you got all the deans to sign up to this curriculum. And uh, it's the younger people that take that, those classes that in the end are going to bring the profession to understand that it's technology in the end that will allow for better quality dentists to more people. So maybe sound knowledge and a little honest information is valuable. Our deans have been given a curriculum, comprehensive, simple, logical way of teaching this. And we're no, in 2017, 2018, we're hearing less about, oh my goodness, this is too expensive to implement, right. to where do I get the next best thing? Do you, do you see that the sticker shock of technology is waning and perhaps people are understanding the true value today? Well, of course, you're, you're right, Dr. Cooper. It's a matter of value, price versus what uh, the value is. But here's the story. Technology is going to always get better and less expensive. But you can't wait to introduce it. So at some point, you have to get in. And you know when you get in, it's probably obsolete. It's like that, that's the way technology works. And I believe it's going to become more and more affordable and more and more people will use the technology and it will be recognized a decade from now that this, the ACP program is what created the platform to advance technology in dentistry. It takes sometimes a few to make a difference for a big, for the bigger community. And you and your team did just that. Well, so a hearty you. congratulations. We really, really Good have good. enjoyed this collaboration. Going forward, um, where do you see Henry Schein's role in collaboration with organized dentistry? So our role, we believe, is to be the connector. We are shown tons of technology, and the goal is to take that technology and figure out how best to bring that technology into one unified system uh, that meets the needs of a particular dentist. There are many, many configurations. We call it Connect Dental. And how do we connect the various components? But in order for us to do that and be able to provide a service to dentistry, we need to collaborate with the people that know dentistry and the people that know technology and bring it all together. And your foundation has made that a key goal, bringing the technology and the knowledge of dentistry to bear. So we have an opportunity to have very good conversations above the board, honest, ethical yes. conversations about technology. Is it important and valuable that we maintain these communications, that Henry Schein continues to be an active part of what's going on in organized dentistry, such as the American College of Prosthodontists? Well, I'm a firm believer that the only way you make progress in society for the last 200 years since capitalism has become the free market has become the dominant way of doing business. And we know that when 200 years ago, over 80% of the world's population lived in abject poverty. And today it's terrible, it's, still, it's, it's the other way around, it's 20%. It's the free market that does that. And the only way things really happen is when you have public-private partnerships of academia, of the private sector, and in the case of dentistry, the profession, the NGOs, working all together with government to move the ball. Each of us brings something to the table. And I think the, your foundation is the perfect convener for public-private partnerships. And I can tell you one thing. If you call Den and the industry, we will come. And we will come in spades to your association, to your college, to ed your educational foundation, because you showed that you respected our time, we respected your time, and made progress happen. You've mentioned the Education Foundation, and education's a big part of that. Educators are also a big part of education. Of what, what is the sense of industry regarding the future of dental education, most notably with our ability to train truly remarkable, insightful, yes. entrepreneurial scientists and clinicians? Are we able to do our job? Well, 
I think like with every part of the economy, one has to adapt. And the adaption is going to require the use of technology. So those dental schools that have brought technology in to bear from an education point of view, sure. you know, the millennials are not sitting in these lectures any longer. They can see it, they can watch it on TV, and then they want to come and talk. And those dental schools that advance uh, video, uh, that's an old term, but pre-recorded education so that the dental students can come and talk to the faculty about problems will succeed. And bringing technology into the school will succeed. I am very optimistic about the profession because of the adoption of this, uh, uh, this curriculum. I would never have thought it would be possible. What, what size of a footprint does industry, all of these people, all the manufacturers you represent, how big should their footprint be in the dental schools and how do we manage that? Uh, it should be balanced. Okay. That's why you have uh, academics that understand products and this should be balanced. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about making sure that we all advance dentistry together but it, because at the end of the day we have to make sure that the American public is given quality dentistry we're all committed to that the answers will fall into place so we can go on talking uh, Dr. Cooper for hours yes uh, really appreciate you welcoming our entire industry into your foundation to work together without you we're nothing thank you without you we're nothing and so it's great to be here with you on the floor of the ACP meeting in San Francisco in uh, November of 2017. Thank you very much, and we look forward to further collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Cooper. Thank you.